is Paul Thomas, Senior Editor with Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Magazine and PharmaManufacturing.com. I'm here at Interfex 2009 talking today with Doan Pendleton of Vacumax. Doan, thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much. And Vacumax, of course, is well known in the pneumatic conveying field. And uh, Doan, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you have in your booth here today. You've got uh, your non-free-flowing model right here. Yep. Today uh, in the booth we have uh, several displays that we're showing. Uh, this display here is uh, our tube hopper and it's uh, designed for non-free flowing powders and uh, the material is conveyed out of the drum or the uh, pickup vessel uh, through the wand, through the hose, into the vacuum receiver and the material is then discharged into the process uh, below the vacuum receiver. Uh, this could be anything below the vacuum receiver. It could be a tablet press, a filling machine, or a uh, volumetric screw feeder, or a gravimetric screw feeder. And what's the range of materials that you're talking about here? Uh, we're talking about any, any kind of powder, free-flowing powder or non-free-flowing powder. This particular unit is designed for non-free-flowing powders because of its straight wall design. Mm -hmm. Okay. And here we have a free-flowing system. Yep, this system is actually all pneumatically operated, and um, it, so it runs on compressed air. The control panel is also runs on compressed air. It's as a 70 degree cone and with a six inch discharge valve. Uh, this would handle uh, mostly free flowing powders to maybe some non free flowing powders, depending on what the powder is. Mm -hmm. Again, we're conveying the material out of a drum, through a hose, into the vessel, we fill the vessel up for a period of time, and then at that time period, which is only 15 or 20 seconds, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, the, the discharge valve opens and the material discharges into the process below. Okay. And is this a standard vessel size, or do you, do you have larger? Uh, we have larger vessels. We start with the smaller vessels like this. We go to a 16-inch diameter vacuum receiver like this, and all the way up to uh, several hundred cubic foot vessels in some other um, industries. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about your gel cap conveyor. Okay. Over here we have a gel cap conveyor and this little unit is uh, specially designed, specifically designed for handling soft gels and capsules um, to a capsule filling machine or a packaging machine for, or for that industry. Mm -hmm. The operators would walk over and discharge the contents into the bin and the material would then get conveyed up into the vacuum receiver and then emptied into the packaging machine or the filling machine underneath it. Mm -hmm. And of course, one of the beauties of pneumatic conveying is that it's very uh, sensitive and does not damage the product. Right. I mean, you you have gel caps here. What are some of the concerns that manufacturers might have, and what do you usually tell them if they have tablets or or capsules, things like that? Well, with a gel cap, the gel caps are actually pretty resilient. Uh, with tablets, it's the difference between a coated tablet and an uncoated tablet. Uh, we can convey coated tablets uh, without any problem, uh, but with uh, uncoated tablets, depending on the density of the tablet, we can also convey them, but it depends on the density of the tablet as well. We take uh, special precautions inside the vessel and uh, to protect the tablet as it's being conveyed. Mm -hmm. So you work with the manufacturer on that. Yes. To determine what's right. What's we also test what's the product for the man, for the end user uh, in our test lab at, in Belleville, New Jersey, and um, we try to set up the equipment as close as possible mm -hmm. to what how they're going to use it, and then they would come and witness the test and evaluate the product based on the test. Mm -hmm. And then you've also got conveying into a blender here. Yeah. This is actually a, um, a filter separator for a direct charge blender loading system, which means that this unit would get connected directly to a, a process vessel for blending. And, um, and that would be an airtight vessel, uh, a V blender or a double cone blender. Uh, the operator would uh, convey material directly into that blender and and bypassing without the need of a vacuum conveyor. A vacuum conveyor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what so. uh, what have you heard from customers in terms of this? I mean, what what kind of benefits are they realizing? What kinds of things do they tell you? Well, the speed of loading a blender with a direct direct charge loading is much quicker than cycling using a vacuum conveyor. A vacuum conveyor will uh, convey and discharge, convey and discharge, and you have to do that many times to fill up a blender. 
uh, a blender can be loaded uh, directly without stopping, so it's it's much quicker to load the blender that way. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit it's dust free as well. It's a lot faster mm-hmm. than having to load it by manually or by gravity. Mm-hmm. Of course, dust free is good for the operator as well, yes, especially. Right. It saves the uh, it protects the operator. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, Don, thanks so much for talking with us today. Well, thank really you appreciate very it. much. I appreciate it. Thank you.